So, uh, uh, you mentioned Wrexham earlier because I was thinking we was having a conversation with somebody the other day that people, people, we had a goalkeeper here actually played for Wrexham last season, Ben Foster, yeah. who yeah. from nowhere he's cycling GK just it just went absolutely phenomenal. And then we had a call once with a brand who all they wanted was Ben. That's all they wanted, and they didn't. We were pitching them the assets they just wanted ben and it came very very clear to me that they want they needed a a, a relationship with him so we ended up putting him in touch uh, in direct touch from there because we knew ben wasn't going to be here towards the end of the season so we knew we'd then lose a sponsor from there um we that's the only time that's ever happened to me here that it's been about one person and I imagine with Wrexham, how you protect the owners' is IP because, let's face it, that, that's the USP about Wrexham at the minute. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic story and fantastic documentary, um, two great owners. And But I, I imagine when you're doing those sponsorship conversations or partnership conversations, you're having to protect uh, Rob and Ryan. That they're just not going to be flogged off to go and open uh, open stores and and go from there one thing i would say is it doesn't need to be a great player to turn the needle it can be a player from a country which so for example there's a there's a club in spain who had a chinese player and the amount of sponsorship mm -hmm. they got was phenomenal and when he came on a free trial afterwards i was trying to convince our uh, the people up in our in our player um, recruitment team to have a look at him because that would have he's an, he probably wouldn't have even got in our first team at the time, but wow, would it have brought some commercial support for us? So, yeah. someone from China, somebody from South Korea, the first Indian player to to smash it in soccer in this league, the the brands and the, we're talking a lot about partnership here, but it's not all about partnership. You look at what Zlatan. When Zlatan was playing, even when he went to LA, the amount of people following him there to watch him. So, but that is a that's a great play. But it doesn't need to be a great play. It, but commercially, if it's from a from a country where the fans follow, it can really move the needle. And we we had a Mexican back in 2016. Didn't stay with us long. Long 2015. Sorry. And you saw this spike from Mexico in in social media, and then this drop off after he went was like a it's like a cliff. So yeah, it, I, I think to answer your question, yeah, we'd love to have more people like that. But the, there is reason why our play, our our player recruitment team pick the players they do, and um, it's all about it's it's normally about the feet. So we we try and educate them of well, if you sign this player, that would really help us commercially, and this will be your ROI here, and this is how much your merchandise will be, and the partnerships could be, and the GAs, extra GAs from there. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, I've experienced that in, um, in baseball, representing the Dodgers. You know, they were very big in in Asia, signing uh, uh, Korean players, and all of a sudden you had an entire, uh, you know your rotational, you know, uh, signage, you know, an outfield wall signage, all of a sudden you had five or six Korean companies all just dumping, you know, six, seven figure deals on you because you, you had, uh, you had, you had their, their top player. Obviously we're seeing that now with, uh, uh, Shohei Otani with, uh, with the angels. Uh, they're, they're getting, they're, they're getting all the Japanese, uh, revenue, uh, much like Seattle did when they had, um, Ichiro. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, one of one of the, you know, the, the one of those those trends that that, that we we followed and watched uh, was uh, you know so, you know watching some of these ownership changes and, and and as someone who's who you haven't gone through an ownership change you know recently but you're kind of sitting there watching some of these you know uh, transactions that uh, that have happened um, you know within the Premier League um, you know. You know, and obviously we're seeing some of the, you know, the sovereign wealth uh, funds uh, coming in. Uh, some of them have been bidding. Uh, we've got a client that bid for uh, Manchester United and, and, and didn't win it um, or didn't get into the final group. Um, 
but um, just, you know, curious just as, you know, again, you've got a pretty good seat to watch those, um, you know, as you, you know, obviously, you know, that, you know, you're, you're seeing, a, you know, a new, a new kit partner now on, uh, on Newcastle. Uh, we're seeing, you know, we're, you know, and again, probably, and it's not a company that you'd be able to pick up a phone and go, Hey, you know, uh, take a look at, uh, you know, European soccer, take a look at the, you know, you know, you know, soccer here in the, in the UK, EPL, uh, championship, um, you know, cur- you know, just kind of curious, you know, as you watch ownership shift change, obviously that the change in leads is going to be very interesting. We're a little bit, uh, cl- we're very close to that as well. Um, just curious as you watch some of these changes, um, you know, does it, is it, does it present an opportunity for you to, um, you know, there's a, there's a kid partner that's getting, that's going off Newcastle. Is that someone that, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, finds its way to a club like yours, you know, when they're, when they're pushed out, you know, because of an ownership change or. Yeah, you'd like to think so. Um, it hasn't really yeah. worked out yet. Um, like you control the controllables and, the, the people who have come into Newcastle and, and I was in Abu Dhabi a few months back and you look at some of the companies around there and you think, I'd love to engage with these people. But when they're owned, when they own a club or many clubs in, in Abu Dhabi's case, in, in Manchester City's case, we, there's very little chance that we are going to be able to um, get in and 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 really being taken seriously there when let's face it the um we're not one of the we're not in the elite league at the moment so we try different things from there we, we try not to go after the um the established countries now we, we have and we've had success and we i think we're into year six of american airlines partnership now but um We've tried to do a lot of work in India and we've partnered with an Indian club and Odisha and that's brought some revenue opportunities alongside it as well and some organic growth from there. So we try and do things differently, but yeah, in a way you could look at it and I never really thought about it this way and be quite envious of uh, suddenly Newcastle have got a great opportunity to get into Saudi and uh, to, to uh, the, um, the brands in Saudi, but yeah, we don't we don't have that opportunity as much. So we we try and create that opportunities for ourselves. And um, yeah, I, I, I've never really looked at it as that. But uh, yeah, we 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 have to maybe we have to work harder. But then you look at talk to people at Newcastle or Man City. I'm damn sure they work bloody hard themselves, um, and they've got difficult numbers to hit as well. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll catch you all next week. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.